Hey guys, welcome to Ace Mining where we discuss crypto mining strategies for survival. And guys, today the plan is simple. As you can see right now in this video right here, I am doing an unboxing of a new graphics card. And as you can see right here, as I slide off the plastic cover on top of this box, this with us is an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition GPU. And I was lucky enough to grab this at MSRP. The packaging as always with the Founders Edition cards looks great. And you can see it's sealed and all. So let me just unbox this. And guys, I'm gonna be using a kitchen knife to open the seal. So bear with me about that. <laughs> and now it's time for the big reveal. Three, two, one, and damn. That is one beautiful GPU and the box was quite heavy too. So you can see me attempting to take it out but it's just really heavy. And you can see that covering over the PCI 16x port is kind of bent. So I was wondering if the card has shipped with physical damage. However, that was not the case, thankfully. I just checked it too. That was the first thing that I did and everything was fine. And guys, the card itself looks great. Nothing extra to talk about. Founders Edition GPU, manufactured by Nvidia itself. And guys, this is 3080 Ti, the second best graphics card from Nvidia, consumer grade, which you can buy right now. Now inside the box, you get the regular quick start guide, some warning manuals, and the splitter cable that comes with these Founders Edition card, which I also got with the 3070 Ti. That means it will take two PCIe cables, eight pins, and considering the TDB of this card is around 350 watts, one PCIe cable will just not be enough for this. And guys, today the plan is simple. We are gonna put this guy in a test bench, and then we are gonna test this card on multiple algorithms, starting with Ethereum, Ravencoin, Fyro, Conflux, Flux, and even Ergo, because these are one of the most profitable coins you can mine on this GPU right now. So I hope that makes sense. So that was it for a quick unboxing and intro of the video too. So this graphics card is actually gonna go. I don't know if you can see this properly, but this is actually my test track. And right now it's housing a 1050 Ti just for experimental mining purposes. Testing on different things on 4GB GPUs. I like to do that stuff. And I keep on doing all these things on my experimental rig. And most of those things do not make it to video because they are not as profitable as I thought they would be. So that is some behind the scenes stuff. However, that is the plan today. And if you guys are interested in money, crypto and mining, make sure to subscribe to the channel and watch this video until the end. Because here it is mining, that's the stuff we talk about. So let's begin the testing of this GPU. So guys, next step is obviously to install the graphics card onto the test track, which I just showed you previously in the intro too. So as you can see right now, I've already collected the dual PCI cable adapter that comes inside the box onto the port. And now we are ready to mount. And what we are going to do is we're not going to use a riser right now. I'm just going to mount the GPU on the 16x slot directly. And as you can see, up and close, the dual 8 pin adapter actually takes in two PCI cables, separate 8 pins and combines them and gives the power to the GPU itself. And the TDP of this card is actually 350 watts. And even when I was testing for mining, I actually noticed that it is really power hungry too. So as you can see, I have like two cables coming out of my PSU and both these PCI cables have actually two headers each. One is a daisy chain one and one is the main header. So since this card is really power hungry, what I actually decided was to insert the main header directly to the ports that are given. So we are never short of power. Since we are not using the riser, I'm just gonna use the main cables and plug it directly. If I was using a riser, however, I would just use one of the daisy chain ones and I'll just split that and connect it to riser too. Two PCI cable will carry ample power to power up this GPU. So I suppose we can actually use the daisy chain part of one of the cables in order to power up the riser. So that's great. And now the cables are nice and tight. Everything is connected. And with that, we are ready for a first boot and the fans are spinning. LEDs are lighting up. So that's always a good sign. And now let's fast forward a bit. And as you can see on my monitor, high OS is loading up. And while that happens, let's just appreciate the GPU while it's turned on for a bit. As you can see the white accents in the front, they really add on to the beauty of the GPU. And on the top, as you can see, the GeForce RTX logo actually lights up. So that is all really great. Aesthetically, really minimalistic classic NVIDIA GPU right here. And now since our test bench is all set up, next thing we need to do is start mining on it. So let's do that right now. So guys, before I show you the mining part of the video, the thought process while testing this was actually, when we select the 3080 Ti on whattomine.com and hit calculate, so the most profitable coin is Ethereum obviously, as it is most of the time. And also the other coins that we are gonna be testing today 
are Argo, Fyro, Cornflux and Flux 2. And since the hash rate on Fyro, Ravencoin and Zero is same because they are all the derivatives of Procpo algorithm, consider that covered too. So the hash rates that are given on what to mine are essentially really conservative and actually in real world performance you can top these numbers and get a lot more hash rate than what is mentioned right here. So that is why the testing part is really important and since today we are testing the Founders Edition GPU, let me show you the videos when I tested it actually. So first algorithm that we were testing was obviously Ethereum and I'm not gonna show you the part where I was testing it, I'm just gonna show you the part where I achieved the best possible hash rate for best possible settings and if there are multiple hash rates according to different power limits or so, I'm gonna show you that specifically but for Ethereum the result was simple. If I show you the what to mine page, it says 85 meg hashes per second. Good, that's good. But you know what, we can do better and we did do better. And as you can see, my card is actually doing around 90 mega hashes per second. And if I fast forward a bit to around 29 minutes in the video, we are still doing 98 mega hashes per second. Now the part that is important for you guys is, this card does between 89 to 91 mega hashes per second. Up and down, up and down. LHA unlock is 74%. The miner I'm using is T-Rex miner. Finally, you might want to know what overclocks I'm using for that. So let me show you that part too. So yeah guys, these are my overclocks for the RTX 3080 Ti on T-Rex Miner, mining Ethereum and as you can see the core is 1200, memory is 2600 and the power limit is 285 watts and software the consumption is around 283 watts so that is what we are gonna assume right now and Ethereum was pretty state forward I tested a bunch of overclock settings and the hash rate was good from the start itself i was not able to push it past 91.5 mega hashes per second and use as you can see even on the minor window too the power consumption also fluctuates somewhere between 267 to 283 watts and the hash rate too as i said 89 to 91 so that's really great the objective was to achieve more than what it says on what to mine obviously if you wanna go for more efficiency you can lose a bit of hash rate so that's your thing if you want to do that because efficiency is really the most important thing while mining if you have a good chunk of electric bill burning your mining earnings so you can do that in this video i'm only gonna tell you the highest possible hash rate i could achieve so now we have covered ethereum we have covered the overclock settings now let's look at the next coin that i tested so the second most profitable coin at that time of doing this video was actually Argo. So after a couple of refreshes, so I have the screenshot of the settings right here which actually did work flawlessly for me. And as you can see in this, we are doing 265.8 mega hashes per second. And the memory is at 3190 and the core is at 1575. So we are still doing right around 262 mega hashes per second. 265. So guys, after testing a bunch of overclock settings on Argo, the one that made most sense and actually we were able to achieve a bit more hash rate than what is given on what to mine. Although some miners are able to push this card up, up to 275 mega hashes per second. However, on my card, I was not able to push it that far. So the final settings for Argo is 3190 memory, 15755 on the core, power limit I left it at 0 and the power consumption was really great on this particular algorithm around 220 watts. Let me just show you the minor window too. So as you can see the temps are great, power consumption is under 220 and we are getting around 265 mega hashes per second. So in the end I was really satisfied with this hash rate although some people can get up to 275. The thing with Argo is it is also hash rate limited just like Ethereum and it is kind of finicky the behavior of this algorithm so your mileage may vary but in the end what matters is we were able to get just as much as hash rate as it says on what to mine and the power consumption was less too. Now the third crypto that we are gonna be testing on this card is actually Fire. Spoiler alert guys, I had never mined Fyro before. I have tested a bunch of algorithm on different graphics card but since Fyro moved to Fyro Power, the hash rate is actually same as the one on Ravencoin so I could do the testing on Ravencoin and call it a day for Fyro and Zero too. So let me just show you the finalized result of the overclocks that I selected for mining Fyro and once again just like Ravencoin just consumes a lot of power, highly core and memory dependent algorithm. And as you can see, we are getting around 58.14 mega hashes per second and the power consumption is whopping 340 watts. Let me check the overclock settings for this one too, the finalized ones, because I took a screenshot. So here we have it. Our 3080 Ti Founders Edition is doing 
58.15 megahertz per second average consumption is 340 watts in software the core is 1200 and the memory is 2600 that is what we were at while mining Fyro. and guys this is the same hash rate that you are gonna be seeing on raven coin and zero and another algorithm which is a derivative of procpo and don't worry guys i'm also gonna be listing all these overclock settings in the description and in the end of the video i will also be making a compilation of all the hash rates in a notepad document so you don't have to be that much confused if you forget things be aware that there is a summary at the end of this video so chill out now let's move on to the next algorithm which is flux and up until now for mining i was using a t-rex miner but for flux the plan is different we are gonna be using mini z because t-rex miner cannot mine flux which is based on zelhash so let's begin the testing so as i tested for flux for quite a bit because finding the right overclocks was a bit tough but finally we found our perfect overclock settings for our gpu and we were getting right around as you can see in the minor window too we are doing around 99 to 101 megahertz per second but the average number was as you can see right here keeping the power limit at 300 and in software the power consumption showed 299 watts keeping the core at 150 and memory at 3000 these exact overclocks worked the best for me and thanks to mining chamber because i encountered these overclocks by watching his 3080 ti inno 3d video too so shout out to him so if you're watching my video make sure to check out his video too since i'm testing for a founder's edition card he did test for an inno 3d variant of the card so maybe it can help you out too so you can try my overclock settings if they don't work you can try his so the point of the matter is we were doing on flux 100 solutions per second and once again flux also like ravencoin really power hungry algorithm the more you increase your power limit the better chances you have of getting higher hash rate while mining so there's that and finally the coin that we tested on this gpu was actually conflux so let's move forward in the video so i can show you the actual testing part so conflux right off the bat it was pretty easy to overclock and if we see the hash rate on what to mine for 3080 it says 85 megahertz per second however you can clearly see right here on conflux the 3080 ti is doing 112.8 megahertz per second so that's really great however if you see the power consumption on here it's actually 346 watts so one has to really consider while using a card as power hungry as 3080 ti do you want the extra hash rate or do you want the efficiency so it's totally up to you i'm gonna leave it up to you however let me just show you before i finalized my overclock settings for this one to get the maximum possible hash rate i did the power limit at 350 memory at 2700 core at 1600 however i also tried to make it a bit efficient so what i did was i reduced the power limit just like any sensible person to 320 and guys the hash rate drop was real so the hash rate kept on dropping and finally we were stuck at 94 megahertz per second even after dropping the power limit up to 300 so it's totally up to you i think by dropping the power around 50 watts and i lost like 18 megahertz on conflux i guess it may be worth it because 50 watts is lot and if you consider the megahertz per watt i guess this will be a much more perfect setting for miners to mine if the electric cost is high and guys with that conflux was our last coin that we tested once again i did not show the results for raven coin and zero x separately because they are the derivatives of Procpo. i promised you a summary i'm gonna give you a summary so let me just clear this and i'm gonna be inputting the hash rate and now we have the numbers right here let me just zoom in a bit so those of you watching on the mobile screen can see this so these are the total number of coins i have tested right and here is the raw profitability right in front of you for these particular coins over the top we have ethereum revenue three dollars post electric if you have an electric rate of 10 cents per kilowatt hour so the profit per day is on ethereum is 2.36 dollars and the revenue per day before electric is three dollars per day and then on second we have conflux the revenue however is a bit more than ethereum at three dollars and 12 cents a day but since it's a power hungry algorithm so the profit is actually two dollars and 29 cents on third position we have argo and the hash rate at 265.8 generated two dollars and 74 cents of revenue and after electric it should be around two dollars and 21 cents nextly we have flux while mining flux the revenue is is two dollars and 79 cents and post electric the revenue is two dollars and eight cents and for Fyro, the revenue is two dollars 85 cents and the profit is two dollars and four cents and lastly we have ravencoin revenue is two dollars and 59 cents 
and the profit is $1.78 at the lowest. Part of the blame for that goes to Ravencoin halving and the price not increasing right after that event. And that is why Ravencoin is a lot less profitable right now compared to all these other coins. This is the profitability on top coins right here which most of the people want to see on GPUs like this one. So I guess that concludes the video. Once again just to remind you guys, all the overclock settings will be summarized and mentioned in the description as well as I'm gonna do a pinned comment and put them on there. So if you wanna test those settings out for yourself, you can do that. Before I do that, I'm just gonna summarize the overclocks and hash rates or a notepad document just for the fact that you can see it by pausing the video right here too. So here we go. So guys, finally here I have a compiled list of the algorithms that were tested in this video along with their overclock settings on high OS, the power they were consuming, the hash rate they were giving and for knowing the profitability you can just consult this window right here. We just discussed the profitability previously too but if you just wanna have a mental note of it you can take a screenshot or do the testing for yourself personally and input the numbers right here and you will get your results. Just to wrap up, the most profitable coin was Ethereum followed by Conflux, then Argo, then Flux, then Fyro and at last it was 7 coins. So there we have it guys, here's your profitability, here are your hash rates and overclocks. And I guess that's all that we needed to talk about the 3080 Ti mining testing video. So I guess that is it. So video turned out kind of long, but hey, it's informative and I had really fun testing this new GPU and now it's gonna be mining Ethereum 24-7 because after adding this card I am right around 950 MHz per second and if I include my own PC on which I am recording right now because that has got a 3070 Ti too so if I start mining on this one I'll be able to reach that goal of 1 GHz per second which was always a dream ever since I started mining. It's not a permanent solution for to achieve 1 GHz because I rarely mine on my PC but hey if you wanna achieve a number we can do it right now. I've recorded most of my mining journey from last year on this channel which you can check out in the previous videos and I post mining related content on my channel on a regular basis. So if you saw something in this video that you really liked or you wanna check out my other videos where I talk mostly about mining and crypto. So even the last video we talked about the most powerful ASIC miner from Intel which is about to be launched and all other things related to mining. Interesting stuff. You can check out my channel. You can subscribe and stay tuned for more videos like this one. Also if you need any help regarding mining or if you just wanna contact me you can just join the discord server hit me up right here on the dms or you can ask your queries in the query section there are other mining related enthusiasts like me and and i or them will definitely help you with your query so make sure to join the discord server in the description and also in the description i'll be putting all the relevant links to this video along with these overclock settings and hash rates make sure to check them out if you need them and as always goodbye and happy mining Okay, she's